Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, my name is Tanika and in today's video I am going to be doing a little declutter. I've got a few products in front of me that just did not work out for me and they need to go in the trash. They need to be gone. Get them out of my life, okay? First up, we have the Maybelline Superstay Active Wear Foundation and I, I'm still really, really mad that they discontinued the Superstay Foundation and bought out this garbage. Like this is trash compared to the old formula. One good thing, I'll, I'll say a good thing about this. They expanded the shade range. I'm not sure about the deeper end of the scale, but in the lighter end of the scale, they expanded the shade range. So that was nice. There's a nice fair shade that suits me better. But the formula is terrible. It just doesn't last anywhere near as well as the old one. The old one was a beautiful, full coverage, long lasting, sweat proof, heat proof formula. This does not have the same coverage. It says it's full coverage, but it absolutely is not. I'd get like a high, like a medium out of it. And this one, they've also extended the wear, saying it's up to 30 hours wear, but absolutely not. It looks like trash after the seven or eight hour mark. It is just not nice. And I know a lot of people feel the same way as me when it comes to this new formula. Another foundation that just needs to go and another one that really disappointed me was the Fenty Beauty Eavesdrop Blurring Skin Tint. I, I don't know, I have this thing with Fenty and I get really excited about any complexion products they bring out. There's not really any other brands that I'm like, oh my God, I must try everything. But for Fenty and their complexion products, I just feel the need to try it all. And every foundation they've bought out has disappointed me in some way. <laughs> Let's start out with the shade, okay? Now I get with these skin tints, there's a lot of them being released at the moment and they have smaller shade ranges because they say that one shade is meant to work for a variety of skin tones because it has more of a sheer coverage. But this just, it just doesn't work like that, okay? This shade one is said to be used for like five or six like it could be used for five or six shades. It's too light for me, one of the fairest people out there. When I first applied it, it did look really nice. It had that light coverage, it looked smooth and dewy, but it did not stay like that. Towards the end of the day, it was so dry and flaky and just, oh my God, falling apart around my nose and my chin and my hairline. My cheeks looked okay, but the rest of my face, it just looked shocking. And that was after like seven hours. It claims to be heat proof, like humidity proof, sweat proof. Uh, uh, absolutely not. I am the queen <laughs> of testing whether a foundation is heat proof as well because my mustache sweats like no other. And this did not hold up to that one single bit. I just had really high hopes for this product and it was extremely disappointing. If you wanna watch the full review on the Fenty and I also have one on the Maybelline as well, I'll link them down below in the description box and you can get a better idea. But in a nutshell, I just, they're just both a no. Another complexion product I have, which I was enjoying until recently I went to use it and it, it's gone bad. So this is the Emco Beauty Instant Concealer, their camouflage and contour concealer. And I have the shade Ivory. So when I first tested this out, I did enjoy the formula. The shade range is not very good and it was like a smidge dark for me. Once it blended out, it looked it okay. It looked it, that's not a word. It looked okay, but it was too dark for me. I did continue to use it though because I liked the formula and if I put it on first and then put my foundation over the top, it looked fine. But I pulled it out to use the other day and I was like, ew, it's separated. Get a load of this. What the F? It is like water in there. I was able to like blend it back together the first two times, but then it just got worse and worse and it is literally just water. Like it looks disgusting. I did post it on my Insta stories and Emco actually replied saying like, oh my God, you must've got a bad one. But I've had so many people, like I had so many people reply to that post saying it's happened to them as well. So I'm not sure what's up with this formula, but something ain't right and this has got to go. 
Emco mm -mm. actually are sending me their other concealer that is in similar packaging to the Maybelline Age Rewind. They're going to let me try that one because this one didn't work out for me. Next, I have a product by Morphe and this is in collaboration with Maddie Ziegler and this is the Face Gloss Stick. So essentially, it's like a balm like a highlighting balm. And I got really excited when I saw this. I was like, oh my God, this is gonna give you that beautiful glass skin wet look. And like it does for a minute and then it's gone and then your face is just sticky. And if you apply too much, it picks up the product underneath. Look, it sounded good, but it just did not perform. If you are after a really beautiful balm highlighter, then I suggest this one here by Mecca Cosmetica. It comes in a duo and this is a beautiful, beautiful highlighting balm that gives you that gorgeous wet look, really dewy, really glossy, which is what I think they were going for with this, but it just didn't hit the mark and I am not here for a product that picks up the makeup underneath. God, that shits me like no other. Like you've spent all this time and effort in your face and then you put something on and the product moves. Like, no, don't go there. And then lastly, I have two products by Revolution and first up is the Soap Brow. Now I, again, had high hopes for this. Revolution makes some pretty good products and this is definitely a dupe for the Patrick Tarr brow soap brow thing which I have right here. Patrick Tarr, revolution. Like come on as if. <laughs> now obviously soap brows are a really big trend at the moment and I personally love doing a soap brow. For someone who has very little eyebrow hairs I feel like it makes my brows look so much bushier and fluffier than what they are but this product just mm -mm -mm. first of all it comes with this weird mini toothbrush like okay why not just put a spoolie in there? It is so stiff and it just doesn't like cling. It doesn't get the product around the hairs like a spoolie does. It's just weird. The product itself, okay, you wet it, you apply it in your brows, but it's not, it's not sticky enough. It doesn't have enough grip to it. And all it does is leave soapy residue in your brows. You are left with these little white clear dots of product all throughout your brow hairs. It looks like your brows have dandruff. I'm not here for it. I'm not having it. I would much rather use my $3 bar of pear soap that I got from the chemist. It does a much, much better job. The packaging isn't as cute, but look, it works. And then the other product from Revolution is also a brow product. And this is the brow pen. And I picked up the shade Ash Brown. Again, when it comes to brows, I have been all about brow pens and I've tried quite a few now, starting to find a few favorites. So when I saw this, I thought, hmm, let me add it. It also really interested me because it has like a liner type bristle, like it's not a pointed bristle. Like, let me show you this one by Emco. I feel like I have no words to explain these right now, but you can see the difference here. So on first impressions, I absolutely loved the tip of this product. It gave me really precise and tiny strokes that made my brows look super fluffy, but the shade, okay. So when I first swatch it on my hand, like a fresh swatch, it looks a bit auburn, but it dries down to a shade that's going to work for me. When it was in my brows though, it did not dry down to this shade. In fact, it got even more and more red as time went on. It was atrocious. It was like burgundy. I'll find the video where I tested it out and I'll link it down below and you can go watch my initial reaction, but I could not believe it. It was horrible. Like, horrible. It's seriously like, look at the shade here. Like it looks fine. And in my brows, I'm not kidding you. Like burgundy orange. I'm not here for that. Okay. I'm not here for it. So even though I like the product, like the tip and the pigmentation and how it applies and how it works, the shade is just off. And I don't think they have a very big shade range to choose from. So I don't think it's worth trying another one. But we'll see, we'll see, I don't know, I don't know, I just, <laughs> the burgundy brows, ooh. All right, well that is all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching. I felt like that just got really ranty there. I feel a bit worked up after that. <laughs>
If you're new to my channel, I would love it if you would take a look around and consider subscribing. I do a ton of content related to Australian drugstore makeup. A lot of it I really do love. It's not always this negative, okay? <laughs> You can also come and follow me over on Instagram. If you want to know the makeup that I'm wearing, I will have a post on my Instagram with all the details, so you can go and check that out. You can also come and follow me on TikTok. I have been loving TikTok lately and have been posting so many videos, so come and follow me over there too. I hope you're all having a fabulous day wherever you are, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.